We greet you all with the peace of the Lord. In reverence to the Word of God, I invite you all to stand. Let's read in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 33. Jeremiah. After Isaiah, chapter 33, verse 3. The Word of God says as follows. Call to me, and I'll answer you. And show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Adore you, God, and we bless you. As for we plead, and you have answered us. We have invoked your name, as the song says, and we feel safe and saved. Our desire is to continuously praise you as we meditate upon your word and bless us in the whole church. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. I plead for the name of the Lord and I'm saved. In the book of Psalms says, This poor hath plead and the Lord has answered him and delivered from all his fears. When we plead, God not only hears it, but God gives the deliverance. Blessed be his name. This passage that we just read talks about a prophet. His name is Jeremiah. The king of Babylon has searched the city and Jeremiah was in a prison, in a dungeon. And inside the dungeon, the Lord has spoken to Jeremiah. And the Lord spoke to Jeremiah that Jeremiah, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Will anything be wonder to me? Jeremiah was a servant of the Lord, prophet. He was an announcer of the Word of God, ambassador of eternity. And in certain occasion, he approached to the people and said to the people, God is great in counsel, magnificent in power. His eyes is open upon all the ways of the sons of man to give to every and each one according to his ways and according to the fruit of his hands, of their hands. So Jeremiah, he spoke those words from the Lord. But the moment that Jeremiah was living, it was the moment that, that I just described. He was in prison. And as he was there, he also testified about the, the Lord telling that the Lord has operated signs and wonders as the people was crossing the, the was living in the Egypt and all the deliverances that God has saved them, has spared them, that the land of promise, the land that gives milk and honey. Jeremiah spoke and lived many, many experiences in the presence of the Lord. But now he was imprisoned. Many, 
many times men because they are attired to a circumstance and because they are living in a moment of adversity, he forgets something. When everything is well and he's preaching, praising the Lord, giving glory to God, God speaks and he listens and he agrees with what God is talking to him and operating. He is an instrument in God's hands. But when the trials and struggles come, Jeremiah starts to fear the circumstances. And God approached Jeremiah and he says something interesting. He says, Jeremiah, if, if, if possible, to avoid my covenant with you and from the day or the night if someone can do that and there is a song an old song from Brazil that says there was never night that could impeach the rising of the sun and the hope and there is no trouble that can Stop the hand of Jesus to help you. As worse as the night, as dark as the dark and darkness can be, worse than the situation can be, that the man can find himself, as nobody can void the covenant that God has with the day and the night. And the Bible says the night is a moment of crying, tears, and even if the night lasts forever, the, 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 the cry lasts forever, all the night, but the, the joy comes by the morning. Nobody can void that covenant that the Lord has made. So whatever appears to be impossible, I'm citing another song something that doesn't look like having an exit. Whoever appears like a, a death, God has changed my fate and he says, I am the miracle, I am here. And Jeremiah was an instrument in God's hands. Jeremiah was a miracle because God has preserved his life until this moment. And now God approached to Jeremiah for the second time. And there was a text in the Bible that says, before the Lord speaks with man, one or two times during the night when he is in a deep sleep, which means God always reveal himself and speaks to his servants. There was a passage that says, would I hide what I do to Abraham? By faith, we are descendants of Abraham. And the promise that God has done to Abraham, he made for all his descendants. But God says that even from the stones, God can bring children of Abraham. Now, speaking with Jeremiah, by the second time, and when he speaks to Jeremiah by the second time, where, where, where Jeremiah was, he, he was still inside the prison, still. He did, not, he did not escape from prison yet. But when Jesus talks, when the Lord speaks to him, it's to show him, to reveal to him the key 
the code, the password for him to leave the prison. Because God has prepared everything. God says, Jeremiah, the voice of joy, the voice of happiness, the bride and the bridegroom, praise the Lord of the, all, the whole army, and his goodness is forever. He was saying that even though that moment, even though he's still in the prison, but he will leave soon. So the Lord says to him, call to me. That's it. Recently, we heard a message about a prophet from the past that the the couple has made a room by the by the the, the wall with a chair, a bed, a table, and a chandelier. So the prophet asked the couple, "What can we do? What can I do for you?" The king, the chief of the army, she says, "Nothing. I don't need anything." Do not cry to them, because my situation, they cannot resolve. My circumstance, only God can respond. And many times, man is like that. Man is in the situation like that, described. And they forget to plead. And sometimes we, we cry out to the doctors, to the lawyers, to a politician, to the pastor. Doctors can do some. The lawyers also something. A politician might can do something. It might cost too many to you later. And the pastor also might, can do something. A, a cup of fresh water, give a discernment of a gift, and nothing more than that. Then at the moment, what Jeremiah needs to do was to plead to the Lord, call upon the Lord. Jeremiah, call to me. Do not call the king of Judah. Do not cry to the king of Babylon. Do not cry to the chief of the army, to any friend to remove you from the prison. But call to me. And if you call to me, it will be an answer. That's it. And the answer you need for your life, my brother, my sister, it comes from the Lord. And for you to obtain the, the answer that you need, call to the Lord. Call to me and I'll answer you. From God, the answer will come. And even more than that, I'll announce you. Which I'll, I'll announce something. I'll give you a note. And I will reveal to you what you're not seeing. Something that you're still not feeling yet. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. Sometimes things that looks very small, detail, little headache, something that any at will will do it. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Things that maybe someone can do. But great things only God can do. Because great is the Lord. Great and mighty things. Why? Because 
it talks about something that is established by God, by His Word, and things that are unchangeable. When God gives an order, that thing will happen, will fulfill, because it's the Word of God. And He comes to Jeremiah and says, Jeremiah, He says, The Lord, that do that. I am the one that can operate this work in your favor, in your benefit. Thank you. So God is the one that is forming that. And when we read the book of Songs of Solomon, you are beautiful, like the, the moon and the sun. It's preparing the people to see great things and hidden things. To make use of blessings they never experienced before. To feel what men never experienced, what the eyes had, ever, had ever seen and the ears had never, have never heard and not in the mind we can ever imagine. This is what God has prepared for His people. Call to me, Jeremiah, and I'll announce great and firm things that you don't know yet. So he do, and he forms, and he establishes. We can see here the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for every and each one of us. And I'll answer you. And I'll announce you great and mighty things that you don't know. There's a song that we sing. It says, even though the fig tree doesn't give fruits, there's no fruits in the vineyard, and the olive tree also doesn't give the, their fruits. There's no cows in the, in the corrals. Even though I'll rejoice on the Lord and the God of my salvation. And later on, what does it say? Our lamps are full and our press wine will be full. And we're going to rejoice. We're going to be of abundance. And we exalt the name of our God. I'll fear not, because He is my strength. And this is what the Lord is revealing to Jeremiah in that moment. And this is what God wants you to feel in tonight. If the fig tree doesn't flourish in your life, if the prophecy that the God spoke to you one day doesn't fulfill yet, is not fulfilled yet, because the prophet being in a prison talks about prophetically that the prophecy... It's something that God spoke to you one day. It was delivered to you from the part of the Lord to your life, but it did not fulfill yet. But tonight, by the second time, God is talking to you. Call to me, and my project will establish in your life. Call to me, and I'll bring to you an answer. Call to me, and I'll announce you great things and mighty things that I have prepared for you, for your household, and for the new year of 2024. Because this is the will of the Lord, to bless us, even if the fig tree doesn't flourish. Let's sing. Let's go.
the Lord has shown tonight a man that for many years was distant from another family member because of a difference. But the Lord showed that he had made peace with this other family member, but he wants to hear from the Lord. He wants a, an answer from the Lord if he, God has forgiven him for what happened in the past. And the Lord showed that Yes, he have forgiven him. So the wound that was formed, it, it's closed and it's formed a scar. The Lord has made you free because you have forgiven. So if there's no forgive, you know, it does, does not have forgiveness. If I don't forgive my brother, my sister, God will not forgive me. Let's say a little f sin, like a final sin, capital sin. But if you don't forgive your, your brother or sister, also God will not forgive you. As you've forgiven your family member, God is telling you, we are zeroed. You are forgiven. You go in peace. You are free. The Lord has shown also a woman walking on a very uneven way, full of accidents, depressions. And this woman, she couldn't look sideways because there was to the very heavy wilderness in both sides of the way and she has two options to stop there and wait for help or to go back if you run the animal will catch you if you stay the animal will eat you that's the like a common saying there's no exit Metaf uh, metaphorically and she understood that none of the options was a good solution for her problem if she go back it was bad and she stayed if she stopped there it was bad too so what does she need to do she pleaded for the power that is in the blood of Jesus and the, the way the pavement repair by itself Interesting that the man that had the gift says, and she could go freely. Jesus is not a, not a way full of holes. It's a way that you can walk and you can have peace. When we plead for the power of the blood of Jesus, which is his Holy Spirit, his Holy Spirit transforms us and put us in the new and, and living way not full of ups and downs, but a way that will conduct us, as the gift shows, to a beautiful garden. Bible, Bible talks about that, describing the way to paradise, so she could reach her destiny, eternity. The Lord has shown also that some days ago he had a dream. Someone had a dream, something related to the new year of 2024. And one of the texts that we consult the dream was Ezra 6, 9. And whatever they need, the young bulls, rams, and lambs for the bumped burnt offerings of the God of heaven, wheat, salt, wine, and oil, according to the request of the priests who are in Jerusalem. So we want to say that God is the provider for everything we need. And the new year of 2024 is, will be a year that the church will have enough experiences to experience the provision of God. When the people are live, were living in Egypt, 
they left with many supplies, gold, silver, and many uh, herd. And they left rich there. They didn't live poorly. There was great spiritual blessings for us and also abundance of our professional life, our material life, believe it. The dream shows that. Two trees. One tree was full of fruits. And as he approached to that tree, he thought, like, how can I reach too high? He didn't have a, a, a ladder or anything. As he approached to the, to the tree, the fruit fell from the tree. As he opened, The, the fruit was ripe. And in the other night, he had another dream. dream, And he saw a olive tree, very small plant. Oh, loft. 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 It's like a like a loft. And he approached with this olive. Oh, it's a vineyard, small vineyard. So I'm gonna plant this to prepare this for the vi the vineyard can grow. So the, the plant grow and give fruits, so everybody will be able to to eat and to have provision from this tree. Blessings, spiritual blessings, and material blessings. When you put your life, when you plant God's project in your life, not the Maranatha Church as an institution, but church, body of Christ, faithful church, the, the bride of the Lamb, you're going to make a use of many results and blessings. And another tree was on a forest. And he didn't need to plant or take care. The fruit will fall on his hands. The blessing is at your hand. So he can take possession of the blessings that the Lord has promised. You didn't know that, right? But even I didn't. But we have pleading to the Lord. And God is announcing great and mighty things that we don't know. But it's being prepared for us in the new year of 2024. Let's have a word of praise to the Lord. We thank you for, as for during all this year of 2023, we have called upon your name and you have saved us, you have preserved us, you have protected us from all evil. You have blessed us so much. We adore you. As for this year, you have sustained us in your presence. We bless you as for the year that we are about to enter. Nothing will change because you are faithful. You are an unchangeable God. You are sovereign. You are our Father. That's why we bless you. That's why we can trust you. In your power, in your grace upon our lives, your mercy, we can trust your love. That is something that we cannot measure. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. The other servant can also glorify the name of the Lord. Lord, we bless your name every day in your presence there's a mystery revealed the blood shed on the cross you are going in front of us and operating miracles 
you are God that never change and your word has a meaning for us your prophecy the prophecies are fulfilling to be in your presence is a privilege for your presence among us in this place our heart is rejoicing for for our fellowship with you and and for all the actions of your holy spirit during this service we could be in any other places but we are here to proclaim how great you are in the name of jesus amen the church may stand Thank you, Lord, for your presence, for the fellowship. We adore you, and we ask you that you can continuously operate in favor of your people. The gift that was transmitted, pour all your blessings upon your people. Bless us, heading home, our businesses, and in your name, with the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, and the sweet consolations of the Holy Spirit, can be upon all of us in the name of today and forever. The church may be seated. Tomorrow, 
31st, our service will be 10.30. The Sunday school teaching at 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m. So both services going to be in the same time, 10.30 a.m., 10.30 p.m. Everybody's invited, and you can bring guests, family members, friends to be with us. Amen. Remind you the seminar. In the bus, there's no more, no more spots. We have more than, than we need it. For the seminar also, the invitations are closed since Thursday. If someone didn't do it, I'm sorry. You, you have missed a great opportunity. And I believe that this seminar will be remarkable. We're going to come back saying great things the Lord has done for us. So if you didn't do it, I'm sorry. If you desire a prayer or assistance, give us a signal and we're going to uh, pray for you. The, the man come to the Sunday school and after the Sunday school, we're going to have some tents to open, some tables to put it out, and we count on the participation and the help of everyone. Right after the assistance, we have, we're going to have a rehearsal with the ladies for a song that will be sang on the service.